Okay, now we should be good. Yeah, testing. So, sorry about that. Uh, I'm a little bit late. I was trying to get started here and I, uh, I got a grocery delivery, so I have to go take care of that so that it doesn't go bad on my front porch. Uh, but uh, then I thought, well, I should l give them something to listen to. And then I said, well, that's not going to work because if people come on and uh, the, you know, they're trying to, uh, I have music playing, well, then it's going to get uh, you know, copyright flagged. And even though that doesn't, I don't monetize my videos, so it won't mean anything to me. Uh, it will usually put a big blank gap in the audio somewhere in the video, sometimes not even where I'm playing the music. So I had to go find some music that uh, the internet doesn't know about. Uh, this is a live concert that I'm not going to tell you where it is or who it is because I didn't get any of their permission to share it with you. But if you, if you know, you know, as they like to say. So uh, I am going to turn this mic off, go take care of my groceries. It'll take me probably five minutes. And, uh, and then I'll come back here and we'll do some stuff. And as I do that, uh, let me set up uh, on cam twist here. Let's see if we can get, uh, well, first of all, I guess, oh, I don't need a preview. I've got it right there. So uh, if you don't already know, I use cam twist uh, to make my DSLR camera that you're seeing me through into a webcam. And I do that using camera live, which broadcasts the signal of the webcam and keeps it up and then camera uh, and then uh, cam twist basically makes it a uh, viewable uh, source for the for the computer so it sort of loops it back if that makes sense uh, it's all very kind of complicated and took me many many weeks to set up uh, years ago now but it's worth doing and uh, there's a little bit of finagling you have to do you have to know a little bit of terminal to uh, to get it to work but anyway so okay, so we're gonna we're gonna use that, and we're just gonna put some text on here if I can find some. Uh, what would be text here? Okay. I just want to put. I don't know why it's so hard. Uh, roll text is fine. Let's add that. Hello world. Uh, great programming language thing. Uh, And roll time, I don't know, two. How do I reset this? I don't know, but we're gonna change the position to over here. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right, so uh, I suppose that is text on the screen, so we're just going to leave that for now. And um, let's see if anybody's in the chat. Nobody's in the chat. So, uh, yeah, if you come on, uh, well, you won't see this, but you'll see back in a moment. And uh, I will be, in fact, back in a moment. Uh, let me turn up the recording in the background for you. Let's also make sure that it's actually going to go on to the next track. Okay. Here you go.
if anyone's there, I'm almost done. I bought quite a few items uh, today that I need to refrigerate apparently. Almost everything, so uh, almost there. All right, well, so let's get started today. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of bass trumpet mouthpiece stuff. Uh, let me take this away, first of all. Put that away and get this out and get rid of that. Okay, so now we're actually here and uh, I believe you can hear me. Okay, let's turn that up a little bit. Let's turn those guys up. And all right, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit of mouthpiece buzzing and uh, I'm gonna, uh, sorry, bass trumpet mouthpiece buzzing. I, I loaned one of my other bass trumpet mouthpieces to a student and I thought this would be a good informative time to uh, show how it can safely, safely be used and, um, and also talk about forming new habits because uh, this is something that a lot of my students are trying to do. In fact, arguably all students all of the time, right? Uh, we're always all trying to build better new new habits that are better than our old habits And so I want to talk about that I printed out a sheet and uh, I can distribute it as well if, if anybody wants it, but uh, please type in the chat uh, if you have Questions about anything comments about anything. I haven't warmed up yet So I'm gonna very slowly warm up and uh, and and I'm gonna use the bass trumpet mouthpiece to do that but I want I, I I was starting to think about what I'm gonna do today, right and uh, I, and, and what my students need, but also what is generally something that people need. And uh, uh, I talked to, one of my students has a, has a difficult time uh, um, understanding what I mean when I say building habits. And so I thought, well, that might be something interesting to talk about, not because of that particular student, but because I bet that's something that a lot of people don't really understand, but just kind of nod their head when they hear it because they go, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I, I, I'm supposed to know that, right? Um, and you're not. You're supposed to ask questions if you don't know something. But that's also very hard for us to do sometimes, right? And it can, it can be a, a variety of reasons why we don't ask questions when we need to. But, uh, the, but, but the truth of the matter is um, a lot of times we're just, you know, we, we just don't. And so uh, a lot of this, I'm just going to call it a podcast, a lot of this uh, uh, masterclass time, a, a lot of my videos, uh, are trying to guess what un unasked questions are out there in the world. But uh, as always, I would love to answer some actual real questions. So anyway, without further ado, let's get playing a little bit here. Um, I've, I've been listening back to the videos and uh, when, I mouth when I do mouthpiece buzzing, I usually leave this mic on because it gets, gets a really close kind of sound uh, to the mouthpiece buzzing, but I don't think I'm gonna do that this time. I'd like to hear what it sounds like from these mics instead. Uh, that you can't see, but that are right here in front of me. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just slowly warm up with a little bit of bass trumpet mouthpiece. Then I'm gonna do some regular trumpet mouthpiece. 
then I'm going to do bass trumpet on the C trumpet, and then I'm going to do regular trumpet mouthpiece on the C trumpet. And so, um, so let's talk about how to build a habit. What, is, what do I mean by that? Well, we're trying to start with something that I know that I can do, hopefully. I, and, and it's okay if I can't do it right away, but I want to start with something. And then if that's step one, right? So let's call that, let, let's call step one breathing. I want to breathe. So I'm going to breathe in. and then I want an immediate turnaround. And it doesn't matter if that has a ton of energy or if it's very soft. I just want it to be immediate and relaxed. So that's the first step. That's the building block. That's the bottom of the foundation of what I'm trying to build. And I can, do, I can, I can build things in a lot of ways. I can, I can try to juggle a couple of things at the same time, uh, and that's sort of piecing it together uh, in a different way. But I, I really prefer like a pyramid or a totem pole kind of structure where it's like, all right, I just got to work on the bottom thing. And then when I've got the bottom thing, can I put something on top of it? In other words, these two things, this first thing is preserved and now I'm putting it into the second thing. So you can maybe think of it more like those old pencils that had the, the, the leads that would push through, right? So like when, when, you, uh, when one you broke or got worked down to the nib, you just take that one out and put it in the back and the next one we get pushed forward. So they're sort of inside each other. Uh, and so there's a thread that's kind of being drawn through all of the things. So if this breathing thing is really the most important thing, well then the breathing thing is going to be omnipresent, right? It's going to be, it's never going to, it's never going to not be in the next step. It's always going to be there. So, uh, okay, so I start with breathing and then maybe I want to turn that breath into, into a buzz, right? but I don't want the air to be restricted. So, I, so, so you can think of building as starting with one idea, right? And then building that idea into the next idea, or sorry, I'm, I'm using the same terms, that's terrible. Uh, then br using that, preserving that, the quality of that, whatever that is, preserving that thing into the next thing that you think is the, the next logical step. You can be wrong here, right? But you want to make sure that step one is present in step two. And in between those steps, we need sort of a glue that helps, helps solidify their connection. And so that is going to be the qualitative link between the first and the second thing. So in other words, I have this turnaround, but my real goal when I start buzzing is how am I gonna, how am I gonna be sure that I'm doing it right? Well, I want the airflow to be similarly unrestricted, similarly, Right, so that's a that's quality. I can get a percentage of that, and and still get it. It doesn't have to be a hundred, um, but I want the airflow to be similarly unrestricted. But I want to get a buzz as well, because that's what step two actually is, right? So I want the turnarounds, the the breathing to be, to be exactly the same, but, or as much as possible the same, right? And uh, I want the airflow to be similarly unrestricted as I get a buzz. And then I'm going to do that on the bass trumpet mouthpiece because it's bigger than the regular trumpet mouthpiece. And that might give me more information. And so we'll talk about each step building into the next. But this turnaround step, because it's part of the first step, or it is the whole first step, and it's going to be part of the second step, it's never going to go away. And similarly, all the steps are going to be that way. And that's why it's a sort of pyramid foundation, because all the top steps are resting on all the bottom steps. Right, so that's that's why we call it building because it's it's really stacking uh, things on top of each other, or maybe maybe it's more like sewing where there there's a thread that's going through all of them. But the problem is it's not just one thread, so there's some sort of like kind of crochet pattern happening where all the threads are wrapped around all of the the next threads, and you can do any one thing at a, at a singular at a, at a time, but that's not how the trumpet works. So. If you build one thing at a time and then one thing at a time, that's, that's fine. You can work on it that way, um, you know, work on step five by itself. But then when you actually want to build your trumpet playing for the day as a routine, you're going to need to start from step one and work through step five. Otherwise, you're going to be able to do one thing, but not all the time and not in all the ranges and not, you see what I mean? It, it's, it, it, you're, you're limiting your circumstances to, well, I can only do this if this. And uh, again, that's fine to start, but we want to we want to start building these threads, right? So that's why we say building. All right.
So uh, now we're, we're 20 minutes in the video already. I haven't played a note. So here we go. We're just going to start with the breathing, right? This is step one. So So we're getting really comfortable with this. And I just want to do it a bunch of times. That I ha when I talk later about forming new habits in general, right? step number one is to be organized. And that's basically so that you can really keep your mind focused on the task at hand, uh, that this new habit that I'm building. So for me, I'm not thinking about all the other stuff I got going on, uh, what I'm going to do later today. I'm just right now, I'm focused on this. right? It's a little hard on stream because I also have to focus on making sure I, I talk to you enough and that I know what I'm going to do next. But sometimes you'll see me just kind of be like out of it. And that's because I'm concentrating, right? So a couple more breaths and then we'll put it on. And so now I can start to think like, how am I going to get closer to this? Well, I'm going to form an embouchure. So you can see me sort of like bring my corners together. And I know where it's going to be basically, right? Do we have a real mouthpiece? Yeah. All right, that's where I want to end up. So it doesn't have to feel the same. In fact, I don't want it to feel exactly the same. Otherwise, I'm not building a new habit, but I want it to feel similar, right? Otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be in foreign territory, and that's not going to feel good. So I might even start with step two now, but I'm just going to breathe through the mouthpiece, right? So I'm going to just preserve the turnaround. And this is that glue I was talking about. How do I, how do I make step one into step two, into step three, right? Well, that was like faster air than, uh, like it came out easier than when I just, I don't know why, but somehow it did. So, okay, so now I'm gonna turn this uh, mic off and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to creep closer and closer to something that might buzz, but I'm never gonna force it to buzz. I'm still gonna be focused on the, on the ease of that airflow out through my lips, right? And if it buzzes, then great. Uh, and if it doesn't, then I'm still just doing step one, right? All right, here we go. So at this point, I'm doing some actual mouthpiece buzzing, and I want to start thinking about how long I'm doing things. I just was working with my timer here. So I, that was maybe a minute or something of actual mouthpiece buzzing, but it was all based on the air. And that's what, this, that's what the bass trumpet mouthpiece helps you do. Uh, you have to be very careful with it. And I've said this many, many times on stream, and I'll say it again. Uh, it's not something that you should probably do. Uh, is to play big mouthpieces like tuba mouthpiece or trombone mouthpiece or bass trumpet because it really just messes your chops up. And why am I doing it? Well, it's, it's because it does help you work on certain habits and it can sometimes break down bad habits into, and make them into, uh, overwrite them with better habits that you then apply to the regular trumpet. So, uh, so what are the rules? Like how do I do it safely? If I'm going to do it, if I'm crazy enough to try, right, then how do I do it right? Well, you do it in small bursts like this, right? I'm timing myself now to make sure that I rest enough and I'm only gonna do it a little bit each day. If, it, if it's supposed to help me, then it's gonna help me pretty quickly. 
And if it doesn't help me quickly, it's probably only going to do damage. And that's bad, right? So I'm going to do it in less than a minute chunks. Uh, I'm going to do it less than three minutes total. Okay, so we've already burned one minute. And uh, I'm going to try to tie it to the regular mouthpiece or trumpet immediately. Right, so with that in mind, let's get the C trumpet out. Okay, and I'm going to play it a little bit on the C trumpet. Uh, this is sort of somewhat famously what Bud Herseth would do after really hard concerts or sometimes to warm up before them, uh, supposedly. I, this is a rumor that I, uh, I understand. Uh, I, I, I don't even know that I know who it's from, uh, but I, I do know that that's the rumor. And, uh, and it's helped me a lot similarly. When I really get crushed, cr crushed my chops uh, from a, a really hard gig, then a lot of times warming down on this helps me undo a little bit of the damage. And, uh, and it's because you're putting the energy back in the air instead of in, into the pressure on the lip. We don't want that. So again, uh, very like medium, low pressure and just focusing on the air and how the air is creating the buzz. If I focus on anything else, well, I'm, I'm gonna feel, if I try to make this feel uh, familiar, well, it's not, look how big it is. It's not familiar. It's not going to be familiar. And, but I can find out how to how to use this thing on the trumpet on, on by itself how to move around on it without it really feeling like um, like I'm I'm doing work to change the notes right and so maybe I do work overall and then I can just move around effortlessly right that's kind of what I'm looking for and again that's going to be in the air and the air the air is what is uh, I guess easier because the surface area. Right, I'm grabbing a lot more chops so I can open up a lot more and really let that air through. And then I can mimic that on the smaller mouthpiece. Okay, so that's been three minutes of rest. So now I'm gonna do some stuff for less than a minute on the trumpet. Just realized that I'd like to be able to hear myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, these guys are at Unity. Okay, I see. Um, yeah, but uh, well, I'm going to keep playing. But I, I, it's m much easier to hear myself without headphones on. was a minute. So that's, I might do that a little more, like I said, maybe three minutes total. Uh, and I talked a little bit during that, but you can see I'm trying to get that turnaround to go into the horn and find that reflection, but I'm less engaged, uh, I'm, less, uh, I'm less concerned about how I engage the reflection right away. And just that the air is flowing really freely, right? When I put it back, well, let's go ahead and do that. Actually, I'll put it on the horn now, right? And now I want that same that same uh, step one, right, was just the turnaround and easy airflow. And now we've got a buzz happening. And so now I want to put that on the entire horn on the regular mouthpiece instead of the bass trumpet mouthpiece, right? But I want it to be just as easy, just as free blowing. And uh, this, is, this is not like my other videos, right? I don't talk about free blowing and relaxed a lot uh, because, well, those are, we all, we all talk about that a lot, right? Um, and I, I believe, generally speaking, that we're, it's not, that we're actually too relaxed in a lot of ways. And so I tend to talk about where we need to make sure that we're, we're strong. But the bass trumpet mouthpiece kind of does that by default. If, I, if I'm not firm in my corners and these outer muscle rings, uh, uh, I'm not going to get a result at all. And uh, it's not impossible to get some result, but it won't be good, I should say. Um, and instead, if I focus on the air, right, then the muscles that need to be there, they're there on the bass trumpet mouthpiece. Now on, on the regular mouthpiece, they're not, but now I, I remember what this felt like on the bass trumpet, right? 
I remember that. And you can see even my muscles just automatically go to where they need to go. So now, this has been almost two minutes, now when I play the, the, the C trumpet on the regular mouthpiece, I'm just going to go for that same feel, right? Here we go. That was two minutes. Sorry. So that was a minute of playing regular trumpet mouthpiece. And you can hear I'm already, I'm already more open than normal. And that might be a good thing. It might be a bad thing. But the air is flowing, and that for sure is steps one and two. And now this is step three. So this is what I mean by building. I'm keeping the turnaround, right? And I'm trying to keep the ease of the buzz that I found. And, and the, the air has to flow through that buzz, right? That's step one and two. And now step three is, can I do that on the normal platform, right? Can I do that on the regular trumpet mouthpiece? And then I may come up with other steps, right? So, okay, while I'm in between things, I haven't been timing. Um, let's talk about uh, uh, some things here uh, in terms of forming new habits. So we already said be organized so that you can think about what the task at hand, right? Okay, well... I'm a pretty organized person. I have most of the stuff. I obviously didn't. I, I organized for my groceries to come at 4.30, and they just got done early. Uh, so I, I had that organized, but that's why I had to start the stream late. Sorry about that. Um, but okay, so, so that's uh, step one, and that means that I can be, uh, I can be present, uh, have presence of mind in my practice session or for you now uh, on the stream, right? And so I've organized my thoughts on a piece of paper, right? That way I don't have to try to think about all those things all at once and try to keep them looped up there. I can just say, okay, can I get this airflow? Well, that wasn't quite it. Well, the note didn't respond right, right? I can just adjust on the fly because I'm not weighed down by other thoughts. So, okay, that's be organized. Uh, the next one is look for patterns. Um, Sometimes there's a series of events that help you to do this new thing you're trying to do. So, for instance, right now, we're building, and we're talking about how to build things, but we're building air turnaround, relaxed airflow into buzz. And what I'm trying to get to, which is not a new thing for me, but something that I care very uh, greatly about in my playing, is I want to get this reflection on the, on the trumpet. And so if my air is impeded or my buzz doesn't happen naturally, then I'm not going to be able to lean into, or I probably won't even find the reflection. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to work my way towards that, and that's a, that's a pattern. If I just start by trying to look for the reflection, sometimes I get it wrong. I just guess, I think that's it, right? I'm not warmed up yet. And so then I haven't, I haven't really, you know, I found a false reflection that I can't really rely on. And then I say, oh, this reflection idea just doesn't work, you know? Um, <clears throat> but uh, more generally speaking, if you're not building trumpet habits, but instead you're maybe trying to build um, the habit of, of getting uh, journaling every day, or maybe you're trying to work out more, right? Or maybe, it's, maybe it is trumpet, but it's just the, 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 the simple idea of making sure that you practice every day and you do a full routine, not, not during the routine, but just the act of getting into the practice room every day in the first place, right? And so for that, you can look for patterns of behavior. For instance, for me, if I wake up first thing in the morning, take a shower, I'm ready for the day. I don't know what it is about, well, I mean, I do. It's a history, right? I used to have to get up every morning, shower, and go right to school. Well, okay, if you do that for 30 years, then when you don't shower, you think, oh, it must be a day off, right? I'll shower later. Well, yeah, but then, you know, it's like two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon before you realize, oh, you haven't done anything all day. And maybe you had things to do that you wish you'd done, but you just didn't choose to do them because, well, it's, you know, you, you, and at first you don't know why. 
But if you look back at the pattern, you go, oh, you know, all the days I don't get anything done, I didn't take a shower right when I got up. Even if you take a shower later in the day, sometimes it's that, it's that finicky. Uh, for me, the big one is shoes. If I put my shoes on, it's time for work. And if I take my shoes off, it's time to stop working. So uh, slippers can do it. In fact, I'm wearing slippers now. It, it, that's, it's something on my feet, and it means it's time to get to work. Uh, I don't know why, except that, again, there's an association there. So look for habits, uh, look, or ra rather patterns of habits, right? And sometimes you can, you can take advantage of that, but for sure you can make sure that you're not shooting yourself in the foot uh, by not doing the thing that you need to do to get to the habit that you're trying to form. So, uh, and then, and that sort of leads me to the third thing, which is use patterns to stack habits. So for instance, uh, I want to do some calisthenic workouts every day. Okay. So how do I do that? Uh, well, I can just have, I can be determined, but this is really why I wanted to talk about this. I have a lot of students right now, we're going into spring break and they're determined to make some new habits happen. Uh, that's great. That determination is amazing. Uh, it, and it probably will fail you at some point, and then you'll get depressed about it, and then you won't do the habit for several more days, and well, at the end, uh, the, the biggest thing is uh, you have to repeat it every day for a long time for it to really stick, so then you know you're way behind, and you got to start over, and that feels like a Herculean uh, feat, so so you can't just go by determination alone. Yeah, we all want to, you know, go to the gym more or whatever it is, right? That's what the New Year's resolutions uh, that fail are all about, like solid determination with good intent. And then it, it's just too hard to keep up. So you have to do something different. And, uh, and pattern, pattern stack, or sorry, habit stacking and uh, task adjacency are uh, two good ways that are kind of the same thing, slightly different, but uh, that we want to do. So... Uh, what are, what, like, what, what is, what is one of those at least? Uh, well, okay, so if I want to work out, do calisthenic workouts every morning, uh, I have a diff I have a little set of different things I want to do. Well, I always have coffee in the morning, and I always take a shower in the morning. Those are two things I do, I do in that order usually. So, uh, if I wake up early enough, then I go downstairs, I make my coffee, and then I bring my coffee back upstairs uh, to the guest bedroom in my house where I do my workouts and I just drink my coffee in there. I'm not working out yet. I just, I'm there in the place where the workout could happen doing something else. This is called task adjacency. It's very good for ADHD. Uh, is, that's where I learned it. Um, but uh, uh, from, tic from TikTok actually, um, for people talking about ADHD coping mechanisms. And I thought I could use that. That's great. So uh, it's basically like, oh, you want to play a video game, but the dishes are something that you need to do. So go, go take your video game to the dishes and just do the video game right next to them. And eventually, sometimes your brain is like, oh, yeah, I'd like to, I could do those. So I just take my coffee in my workout room uh, or my, my guest bedroom, and I just drink it there. And there's nothing else to do in there, generally speaking. I have a bunch of books, but I'm not going to read a book and drink a cup of coffee on the bed, right? That'd be you know, awkward. So what I end up doing usually is I take a couple sips of coffee and I think, okay, what's today's workout? Oh, okay. It's, um, short bridges. Great. Let me get on the ground and do some of those for a little while. Right. And so, uh, that's my task adjacency. And then my, uh, my pattern that I'm stat my, my stack of habits is coffee, workout, shower. So if I use adjacency to get me to put this new thing in between two other habits that I already have that I like, well then coffee and then workout and then shower is a stack. It's a, it's a set that I can get used to. And so then it's much easier for me to fall into the habit because I always drink coffee and then go work out in the, in the guest bedroom. You see what I mean? Uh, and then take a shower, right? And it makes sense because if I'm going to get sweaty, which my workouts don't really count for that, but uh, if I'm going to get sweaty, then I want to take a shower after that, right? So uh, anyway, that's some of the stuff. All right, let's 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 play some more trumpet. And uh, it's been seven and a half minutes, so that's plenty. And I can play one more minute, I said, of bass trumpet mouthpiece. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and this time I'm going to just do a little bit of it, and then I'm going to go back to the regular mouthpiece. And then we're going to try to build that into the reflection. So this is kind of step four, but I'm combining steps two and three into like sort of back and forth so that I can glue them together a little bit better. And that will, that will help me to 
maintain all three of the first steps into the, into the next one, right? So I'm building towards something. somewhat loud I realize but uh, that's one of the things that when you have a lot of airflow you get a loud sound right the vibrations are are higher amplitude because you're using so much air to get them right and that's a good thing for my airflow which was again step one make sure that air is unrestricted as much as possible right so I think we've done a pretty good job that was like two minutes of doing stuff so now my next thing is going to be uh, lead pipe buzzing through the first valve on on the C trumpet. And I want to build what, what I just did into uh, reflection. So I shouldn't have reset it, but... So that was a minute of that. Uh, I'm very small time frames. Why? Because if I'm trying to build new habits, these are these are mostly old habits for me that I need to maintain. But I'm doing this as a new habit sort of uh, uh, masterclass, if you will, uh, uh, talk on YouTube, whatever you want to call it. And um, sorry, my second. I need to clean my horns. Uh, must be pretty badly by now because the all my valves are uh, all my horns have si sticky second valves which is just a strange usually it's different valves on every horn but right now it's all second valves so anyway um, so yeah I'm pretending that these are new habits and when I do a new habit I haven't started the timer again uh, I need to do it in very short bursts if even if it takes me a long time to figure it out uh, if it takes me and this is kind of what I was talking about. Um, it's very easy to build bad habits when you're trying to build good ones. And so how does that work? Well, if I'm talking about pattern stacking, right? Like I said, I drink my coffee, I do my workouts, then I go take my shower. Well, in this case, I do my breathing, I do my uh, bass trumpet buzzing, I do regular trumpet buzzing. Well, no, that's not how we did it actually, right? I do my bass trumpet buzzing, I put the bass trumpet mouthpiece on the C trumpet and play it. Then I play the regular trumpet mouthpiece on the C trumpet. Uh, and then I do lead pipe buzzing. Or I guess I, then I switch back and forth and then I do lead pipe buzzing, right? So I'm building a sort of path here as well. So in other words, not, I'm building my playing, but what's, what's happening in the background is I'm saying, first I must breathe, then I must buzz on the bass trumpet mouthpiece, then I must put that on the trumpet, and then I must do regular mouthpiece on that same trumpet, and then I switch back and forth before I do lead pipe buzzing, right? Jeez Louise, it's still still sticky. Um, so I'm 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 building that, but I'm also building a habit of that. So and that's what's that's what you have to be wary of. Whatever you do, right, to 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 build to to get to where you want to go in your trumpet playing, you're also building a habit of needing that. So if I, for instance, spend six minutes trying to figure out where the reflection is and then finally do, then I'm building a habit of requiring six minutes to find the reflection 
every day. So in other words, I'm allowing for that. So that's, that's not good though, right? I don't always have six minutes. So instead of trying, and that's, that's, it's very hard to get out of this because that's, that means that I'm trying hard, right? I'm, I'm really working at it. And like, you know, don't, don't tell me not to do it more. Well, I am telling you not to do it more, but I'm more, more telling you don't, you don't need to do it all at once. If you don't figure something out that's new in a minute or two, stop, reassess, right? Use, use your organization skills to try to figure out what it is that's keeping you from finding it. Maybe you're tired because you played too much yesterday. Maybe you're not hydrated enough. I know I'm not right now. Getting there though, all right? Maybe uh, you ate something that, made, that you're allergic to and your, your lip is puffy, right? A little allergic to you. You'd know if it was a serious allergy, but you see what I mean? So, so be organized in that way during that time and just rest. And then if you, you might have new information or you might not, uh, then you can try again. And if you, it's when you start to get it in the first couple of tries, in the first 30 seconds or so, that's when you want to do it a little bit longer because that is also a habit that you're building, right? Once, you, once you're doing it, you've got to do it a bunch and for a long time so that you don't forget how to do it. In fact, so that you do forget how to do it any other way. And so, so, so do it in small bursts until you really get it and then start to make it longer. Okay. That's what we're trying to do. So, um, okay, well, we, we can, we can get into that in a second. We'll keep going down the list. I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, so now I'm building into the next, the next step. So this is, I've got, I've got the breathing, right? And step two, well, Hey, how about, how about this? Let's do a quick recap. That's not a bad idea, right? Because what if I forgot, what if there's a disconnect now and I'm just kind of playing some other way and not connected to these, these original things. So that was four minutes of rest. Let's do this. We're going to do all the steps very quickly in order. And then I want to do lead pipe connected to lip slurs. Okay. So, so we're going to do violin, which is in almost all my warmups. So here we go. All right, good. So I did that a little bit out of order because it made sense to, right? When I put the regular mouthpiece back on the trumpet, I said, well, I don't need to play regular trumpet before I get the reflection part from the lead pipe buzzing. I need to get that first, right? I want to build build it, right? That's, that's critical to how I want to play the whole trumpet. Before we were just getting the airflow and sort of trying to match that stuff. So it made sense to do the whole trumpet with the regular mouthpiece a little bit, but now I have a different goal. And so, and it's okay to sort of, you know, it, for it not to make perfect sense, uh, logical, perfect logical sense. It does if you have a little bit more of a broader view, that's all, right? So, okay, so now we've, we've built, that's all of our steps, basically, all the way up to, now I've got reflection on, uh, on the first violin, right? And that's, that, that means I could probably play quite a bit of stuff. I, I think I can probably use that. So, all right, um, let's talk a little bit more. Uh, make, make additional time for new habits. Yeah, 
um, new things take time, right? <laughs> and so you have to just build that time into your schedule. Uh, this is another problem most of my students have where they say, uh, well, I, you know, uh, I ask them, what routine did you do this week? And they tell me, oh, I did the TC uh, part one. Okay, that's great. Uh, did you do it every day? Well, not every day. I, I did it most days. And I go, well, that's okay. You don't have to do everything perfectly every day, right? Give yourself a break. But uh, then I look at their trumpet journal and I say, ah, well, how come it says you did the TC on the weekend, but all the other times it just says warm up and there's not enough time for you to have done the TC warm up. So what did you do during that time? And they're like, well, I, I had like only, you know, 25 minutes. And so I just kind of did some parts of things. And I go, well, since you didn't write down what parts of what things, uh, how am I supposed to know what you did? And, they, and so that I, sometimes they'll show me or they'll just talk through it. But uh, I say, well, that's not really a routine. So most of the days during the week, you didn't really, uh, you didn't really do it. And, you know, and the trumpet doesn't care. I say this all the time. The trumpet doesn't care if you have time. It just if you don't have time to build new, better new habits, then you don't build them, right? It's a, it's a, it's a terribly um, objective chunk of metal tube, right? So if, uh, if you, but if you spend the time, if you, if you build that time in, you say, well, look, I'm doing a lot of new stuff. I better wake up an extra hour early just to make sure that I have time to build these new habits into my playing. I did that all the way through high school. I woke up, I can't, I, I don't know how I did, but I woke up at 6 a.m. every morning and took a shower because, again, that, that, that was what got me going every morning is I'd take that shower. And then I would go to actually the gym, the, the basketball like area of the gym. And just on the floor there, I would just warm up because nobody was in there at, at 6.30 a.m. And then breakfast was at 7.00. And so I'd walk over to the, to the cafeteria for breakfast and leave my horns behind. And then I'd come back through the gym, pick up my horns and go off to orchestra, which was at eight. If I didn't do that warm up, I would have just been terrible in orchestra because eight o'clock is really early to play the trumpet well, but not if you warm up at 6.30. So I just, and that, at that time I was doing the Nicholasville warm up, And so uh, I, it only took me about a half an hour to do all my stuff if I really pressed through it. Uh, there wasn't a lot of rest in it, but I was also like 16 years old. So, you know, anyway, so make time for new habits. You got to, got to find that time and it's got to be, it's got to be in the right place in the day, right? If you play a whole bunch for two, three, four hours and then go try to do a routine, well, you're not going to get as much done as if you just woke up and drank, you know, maybe a liter of water uh, and had some coffee and brushed your teeth and stuff and then tried to do a warm up you're, you're going to have a lot more um, chance to find a new way to do things because you haven't, you haven't been doing it the old way all day. Okay. So make time for new habits. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Let's do a little bit of violin now.
Okay, so that was five minutes of violin, and that's usually about how long it takes me if I'm taking my time. I can do it in three and a half minutes, I guess, but my top lip hurts a little bit, so I don't want to push it. Um, and that makes sense because I am, uh, now what I am definitely doing uh, for real, I said that I wasn't forming new habits. That's not entirely true. I have been um, a little concerned that my embouchure is a little too tight all the time. I'm, I'm getting sort of some air ball uh, uh, stuff when I, I'm not, don't like it. Uh, my, my tone isn't as open uh, or as free as I'd like. So I'm, I am doing something in front of you uh, that, that, is, that is genuine, right? Um, uh, and that is, in fact, the backbone of what I'm doing. I, I don't just turn on the stream and try to demonstrate, like, good trumpet playing. Uh, I, try to, I try to make sure that you understand how I get there. And so that's what I've been doing. Now, uh, as a consequence of that, it's not a habit yet to do this, and therefore I'm not used to how it works. And so my top lip might be sore because, well, maybe when I played the bass trumpet, um, normally I do a bunch of other mouthpiece stuff before this, right? Like I said, I, I don't recommend it, but I do tuba mouthpiece and trombone mouthpiece and other things and some cutout. And so maybe the cutout and the bass trumpet is, uh, is an important sort of bridge to build first uh, so, that I, so that I have my top lip muscles. Uh, maybe I'm pressing too hard into the top lip. Uh, I also have been trying to stand up a little more straighter and bring the horn to me because we just had an Alexander Technique person on campus, and uh, that's I've known that for a long time, but sometimes it just takes this sort of external reminder, oh yeah, stand up straight, bring the trumpet to you. And a lot of times that makes my horn angle a little bit more upstream than when I just kind of, you know, mush into it. Uh, and so maybe that's putting more pressure on my top lip. I don't know. I just know my top lip hurts, so I'm going to stop for a while, right? And I have my timer back on. So let's keep working through the list and talk through it so that I don't uh, take up your entire day um, just talking about talking about things, right? Although I could certainly do that, and, uh, and I love to. Uh, all right, so we talked about making additional time for new habits. Uh, now, here's a very controversial one that I, I've found a great utility in, and so uh, take it or leave it. But the next one on my list is pretend to be someone who does the new thing. Uh, because sometimes you just aren't that person yet, right? In other words, uh, you know, maybe you're not a person who um, goes to the gym. I don't, I'm not a person who goes to the gym. Look at me, right? You can see. I'm, I'm not a gym guy. Fine. But if I want to go to the gym more, like, all I have to do is conjure up the, like, the super, like, bro, muscular, like, can't bend his arms outward anymore image in my head and imagine, like, the stereotype of that. Like, what does that guy want all, to all the time? Well, he wants to, like, you know, he wants sick gains and he wants to, like, carbo-load or get some protein or protein powder or whatever, right? We've all seen, like, the vines and TikToks about all these guys. And also, like, we know somebody like that. So it's not hard to imagine, and then I can be like, okay, I just have to pretend to be him for like 30 seconds, and then I can motivate, like, I can, I can, I want something that that guy has, even if it's not a real person, I mean, right? Like, it's just this dumb idea, and it should be like a caricature, right? Because that's even more blown out of proportion, and then if I just pretend to be him for like 30 seconds, okay, then I can start to do, I'll, I'll, I'll go do the thing that that guy would have done, right? And then it divorces it from me, it, especially if it's a thing that I, I know that I need, but it's just not in me to want, right? Like for a long time, I mean, I'm vegetarian now, but for a long time, I really, I didn't want to be a vegetarian. <laughs> I just knew it was good for me because I was eating too many cheeseburgers, right? So I just wanted a cheeseburger. I didn't want to eat. And I also like vegetables are like boring when you eat a lot of meat. And so, and that, that's what I thought at the time. So I just pretended to be somebody who likes vegetables and wants to eat them, like, all the time. And uh, it wasn't me, it wasn't genuine, but I pretended to be that person, and I thought, well, what would that person look like from outside, right? Like, well, they'd be somebody scarfing down a salad, right? So, I scarfed down a salad. I hated it, but it looked right, and if I do it enough, but eventually I was like, I love salads. And then, guess what? I accidentally became, <laughs> became that guy, right? And so, um, and, and besides that, 
if you just pretend every time, but you do the thing, then what's the difference, right? You did the thing. And that's all you got to do to get started. You don't have to believe in it. You don't have to, you just have to know that you want it, right? Like it, you wouldn't do it otherwise, right? So that, and that comes from the be organized section of, of, the, of the map. Like I need to know why I'm doing this and, and, and what, the, what the core tenants are. What's the point of it, right? How do, how do I build it and why am I building it? And uh, I have to believe in that part enough, right? But beyond that, I don't really have to, I don't have to desire it. Uh, because it's new, right? So, uh, the, like, for instance, people who run, they, they, when they start running, they hate it because they're out of shape, I, like, I, like me. And then after a while, they start to really love it, and then they, maybe they want to do it more or faster, right? Great. That's, that's kind of how these things work. So, so yeah, uh, pretend to be somebody who does the thing um, and, because it's easier to pretend at first, and then um, you still do the thing you want to do, and it helps you to do it every day. And then eventually you just sort of, you have the habit. And so you're, you're going to do it. Um, okay. That was six minutes. Um, my lip feels a little better. So we're going to go ahead and do the next step, which is usually Vinsler's and it may as well be today as well. Right. So if, uh, there's one, it says there's one person in, in the uh, chat. So if you want to ask questions or just say hello, I would be happy to see that you are a real person. And it's probably just, it's probably my dad, which if so, hi dad. Uh, or maybe it's my girlfriend. Let's see if she's, no, I don't know. Could be. Anyway. All right. Uh, so uh, like I said, it's, it's been seven minutes now. And I'm just, I'm not going to favor that top lip. I'm just going to make sure my horn angle is where I want it to be. Yeah, Dad, I bet I bet you do recognize that. That's the 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 slurs that I I named after you because I didn't have another place to uh, to call them. You, their Irons book almost has those, uh, but not not that way, right? It's it's all three of the of the areas 
right? It's, it's like on the second page of the Irons book, I think. Uh, it has all three of the areas, but it doesn't do, it doesn't do them continuously that way. There's not a lip trill at the end, and it doesn't do the double time at the ends of them. So, I mean, I guess you could call it like modified irons, but who wants to, who wants to write down modified irons instead of Vinsler's? That's, that's boring. Plus, arguably, um, enough people do, did those slurs with us in warm-ups every morning uh, for, you know, decades and decades that, uh, you know, maybe there's more right to, it's, it's unique enough and enough people did it that it needs its own name, right? So anyway, so, okay, that was like three and a half minutes, uh, which is pretty normal for me, three minutes for Vince Slayers. And the only other thing we're gonna do is high range. And uh, then I have a piece that I need to practice. And so I thought I would show it to you. Uh, it's actually probably gonna get in the way of the camera, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. Um, but let's keep talking down our, our list of forming new habits. So the next one is my favorite. Um, and that is, so, so, right, so just to recap for anybody uh, who's coming on now, uh, be organized, right? So your mind is free to focus on the task at hand and organized in terms of what, like, why are you building this habit and can you, can you at least label some of the aspects of it, right? So our, our habit that we wanted to build was this free-blowing air that eventually connects with the reflection but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't being inhibited by my, my embouchure uh, any more than, than need be just for it to vibrate, right? Uh-oh, I'm getting a call. Well, hold on, let me uh, answer this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, you know, if, if anyone out there is dating anyone, let me give you this piece of advice. Uh, answer the phone. It's easy. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's not as important. And that was, it was fine. Nothing was wrong, just saying hi. But it's a good thing to do. And uh, yeah, glad I did it. So okay, <clears throat> uh, be organized. We already talked about it. Uh, look for what, our, what we're doing today is trying to blow through to get through the reflex, reflection and use the bass trumpet mouthpiece to do that. Uh, and so that we did that, right? We, we knew how we wanted to do it. We built it in a direction and we tied all of it together with so that each thread goes into the, all the, the rest of it, right? And now all we've been doing is using those same things, turn around, uh, supple uh, aperture, Right to, to get an easy vibration with little air restriction that then we then we move around. I almost feel like I'm not warmed up because it's a lot easier to play this way. So that's good. I should also feel different, right? When I do something different. Um, then we said look for patterns. Uh, that's uh, you know a series of actions that maybe lead you to do the thing that you want to do or uh, or not choose to do it, right? And that's maybe more of a meta forming new habits kind of thing, but, but it can also be in a micro sense too. Um, use patterns to stack habits, right? We talked about task adjacency and uh, the order that you do things in sometimes helps you build it, um, helps you choose to do it the right way and, or just at all, right? Like me doing my morning routine wor workouts. Uh, make additional time for new habits, right? Because it takes more time. And we also talked about not just trying hard for seven minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes to try to get something new to happen for the first time, but instead trying maybe many, many times for one minute or two minutes only, right? Because if it doesn't happen for you right away, well, it's okay to try again a couple of times, but if it's still not happening after a minute, you're starting to build another habit instead that's not a non-working habit, 
right? So you don't want that. Whatever you do, you're building a habit of. So, uh, and if there, if you take away one pull quote from this whole uh, video, <laughs> that's it. Whatever you're doing, it's building a habit. So rest more when you're not getting it right away. And then when you do get it right away, well then you better do that all day. There's a great story about one of my former babysitters who couldn't play above the staff very much. He could play up to high C, but not much above that. And then he went to a Bobby Shoe Master class and he talked about the wedge breath in that class. And so he went, uh, this, this, this guy went into a practice room right after that and practiced wedge breathing and then played a high F for the first time in his life. And so then he played like 47 high Fs in a row because he was just so excited that he could do it. And eventually he became one of the few, you know, king of the double Ds kind of guys and, and you know, had a whole career playing in a really uh, famous jazz band. So, um, you know, that was, a, that was an aha moment for him. And he took huge advantage of it by going to the practice room. Once he got it, he, he said, I'm never going to forget how to do this. Yeah, that's good. But, but you don't want to say that about not got it, right? If I went to play a high F and then couldn't do it, uh, I wouldn't go, okay, yeah, let me do that again. Uh, a bunch more times, right? And that's kind of what we do a lot, is, is we, we build a habit to not be able to play things because we're trying hard. And it's better, much better to rest and then make a new trial from a new starting point. And during that rest, you can try to figure out what you might do differently, or you can just, just reset, right? Just put your horn all the way down, wait for a second, and then go for it. All right, um, that, so uh, make additional time. Uh, pretend to be someone who does the new thing, right? Uh, again, very controversial. I don't want it to feel. I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to talk you out of your own identity, right? Um, that's not at all what I want. But in a certain way, when we are trying to build a new habit, uh, we are we are trying to talk ourselves out of part of our identity. If I'm a guy who can't play above high C, but I want to be a guy who can play above high C, then I don't. I no longer want to. Uh, I, I'm divorcing myself from my former identity of guy can't guy who can't play high C, and I'm choosing a, a new identity of guy who can play up like up to high F maybe right, and so uh, I can just pretend to be that uh, because it's it feels more like who I want to be. Maybe that's a better way to look at it, right? I, I but at first it sometimes doesn't feel that way when you're building habits that you know. Right now we're talking a lot about identity politics or identity. Um, like that's very personal and that's not the kind that I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, I want to lose some weight and because, uh, but I, you know, but I really like eating chocolate and it's like, well, okay, you know, I want to be a guy who likes chocolate still at the end of this. Right. But I also want to be a guy who goes on a walk every day. And so I can pretend to be a guy who goes on a walk every day and not lose my sense of self because I'm just pretending. And then eventually that becomes part of me. Right? So that's really what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about these sort of core identity things. Uh, I'm talking about how to sort of make small changes to your uh, personality is even too strong a word for it, right? It, it just uh, your daily habits that uh, are for the better, like better eating, better uh, hydration. I'm going to say hydration a thousand times so I remember uh, working out a little bit and practicing every day and practicing the right things, right? That's, that's the habits, that, those are the habits that we're interested in in this master class. So, uh, pretend to be somebody who does the new thing. Um, and then, okay, build in rewards. This is the best part. Um, you need a reason to keep doing the new thing that, 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 that convinces you before the long-term habit kicks in, right? So, for instance, it takes, um, so for, for trumpet playing, it takes oh, two to three weeks to just even be able to do it every time if it's a new thing for you. Uh, it takes that, that long to just be able to say, I want it, and then to actually get it like reasonably soon. Uh, and it takes probably six months to actually build it so that you can get it every time you remember to ask for it. And it takes at least a couple of years of that before you, for, you don't even have to think about it and it just happens, right? So that's, that's a long time like imagine on the scale of a year, I got to wait a year until this pays off. I'm not going to do it every day for a year then, right? It's just, there's no reward, but I have to build in the reward, right? So, uh, and it can be anything you want. You can eat a piece of chocolate, which is a good reward for me, uh, after, after you do the thing you want to do. 
Uh, just pretend like you're a child or a dog or something, right? I know that sounds demeaning, but it's it's our animal instinct. It's our it's our it's our sense of of like reward and punishment for behavior, and we can program that. And again, you're in control. Nobody's manipulating you. You're manipulating yourself towards an end that you've already chosen. So there's nothing wrong going on here. Uh, we're just taking advantage of some psychology hacks, so to speak. So, um, you know, uh, my sister's really good at this. She makes little cards for the things that she wants to do, and then she gets to check off the box every day. And, uh, and for me, that, that will only work. I like checking off the box, but that'll only work if I get something after I fill out the whole card. If I, if I get to put a check mark on every day, then I better get, uh, get to go to the toy store and get a toy, which is how I was potty trained and trained to sleep in my own bed and pretty much everything else, right? I, if I could fill up a whole month worth of check marks, I got a Batman toy, you know? So what is that for you? Well, uh, for me on the trumpet, that's what my journal is. It's a bunch of check boxes and, uh, you know, uh, it's information that I fill out. And then I feel good when I complete a whole sheet. That feels really good to me. And then I can do whatever I want the rest of the day. And that's the real reward, right? I get to, I get to turn on the TV. I get to make dinner because I like to eat. Uh, I, uh, I get to go to the movies when I used to be able to do that a long time ago, uh, right? I get to uh, order food in because I, I f don't feel like cooking and I want Indian, right? Whatever. Uh, but I can't do that until I finish practicing. And so, uh, and it's not, a, it's not a punishment like, well, if you don't practice, you don't get to eat. No, I'm not going to punish myself like that, but I'm not going to go out to eat though, right? I'm not going to give myself a reward. And so you have to think about that. Um, yeah, do it every time until the habit, habit is established at least. And then even after that, if you want to build a reward system that you continue to use, then it, it continues to be rewarding. Plus you have the habit, right? Um, but the reward is what builds the habit uh, powerfully. And that's actually why bad habits are so easy to build because their rewards are usually instant, right? Like that's why people have an alcohol problem or a drug problem because the the, the reward that you get from doing that happens almost instantaneously. And so you don't have to wait for the reward when you don't have to build in your own reward. And the, the things that are harder to build, like if you want to lose weight or you want to work out more, well, actually they punish you first, right? It's like, oh, I want to eat, but I'm not allowed to. I'm so hungry. Or uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to go on a jog. Oh, now my whole body hurts, right? At first they punish you and that's why they're so hard to continue to do. But their long-term rewards are very uh, re rewarding. So, so you have to build in an immediate reward that takes the place of the long-term reward until you, can, until you get that. And then you maintain it and you continue to, to maintain the, the long-term reward, right? So, okay, that's the build-in rewards. All right, here we go. Let's do some high range now. That's 12 minutes, that's good, good rest.
So what happens with my high range uh, exercise here is if I top out at A or A flat or wherever it is, right, I can't quite get it without like goosing it a little bit. Okay, if I was in a gig, I'd just goose it a little bit, right? I'd try to make sure that note comes out, but that's not gonna help me long-term build better habits. That's just gonna make sure that I goose it anytime I try to get it. When I say goose it, I mean like force it to come out somehow. Maybe that's pressure, maybe that's lip roll. Uh, now, if it's, a, if it's something that I need to do that I'm not doing, that like always needs to happen, well, that's not goosing it, that's finding a new element, right? But what I mean is just forcing it out somehow, w w any way possible. Um, and so that's okay. I don't need to play a double high A today. I just don't need to. But I do want to continue to build my high range. So what I've been doing is I still do the rest of the lip trills and the scale part. I just don't do the octaves at the end anymore. So I'll continue on B flat, B and C, but I'm just going to do the first two thirds of the exercise. So there it is, uh, about five minutes of high range. That's been my new kind of normal time frame. I used to do about a minute and a half because I would stop when it stopped working. Well, that's fine. I mean, I don't want to go beyond where it works, right? I can't, but that meant that I was only spending about a minute and a half on high range every day and it wasn't enough investment. So. But I didn't, you notice I didn't do more stuff that doesn't work. I didn't ingrain a habit of doesn't work. I ingrained a habit of all the parts of it that do work, right? That's what I wanted to spend more time doing. And then if I do that enough, I might start to figure out how to do the parts that weren't working before, right? And then maybe I can do the whole exercise. And it also makes sense. I, like I said, I, I am genuinely doing something that's a little bit different than I normally do by focusing on this airflow. Uh, rather than my embouchure, which has been more of my focus the last six months or so, um, my, my sort of strength of embouchure. And so uh, it makes sense that because I'm not focused on what I was before, I'm not able to do everything, especially in the edges, the extreme edges of what, my, what, I'm, what I'm capable of. And uh, actually that's quite typical that A flat is my highest note that is always there. And then A is there when I'm in really good shape and everything's working and I'm re well rested and otherwise might not be there. Uh, and a lot of times B flat is also there. Um, and then I usually don't, I don't push for high B or double high C because they're just not really notes that I almost ever need. And um, I want to, I'm, I'm still making progress. I, I'll eventually get those, and, but it's taken me a lot of years to get up to the A and B flat. And even just the, the A flat, actually, the high G used to be like the highest note I could play, but I could really play it. And uh, it's been through just doing this every day that I, I find new ways to do it. Uh, but, but again, you invest in the things that you can do and that you really want to do that way. And then sometimes you, you and you try to improve them still. You try to do them even easier, even better, right? Uh, whatever that means. And then other things kind of present themselves if, if, when you try them, right? So you still got to push that boundary, but you work right below the boundary to get this part to work even easier, or maybe try new things 
and then see if those things, then you push those things over the boundary and see if they keep working. Okay. All right. Let's keep talking through this list. Only do, do not, not do. So uh, this is, this has been a thing that's very, um, that's been really important to me because uh, it's easy for me to think of things I don't want to do. Like don't, don't use too much pressure. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Let me write it down. Don't use too much pressure. Uh, Don't forget to support. Got it. Don't sound bad. Okay. Don't miss that note. Oh, sure. That's easy, right? Well, how do you not miss a note? I mean, explain to me how I do it. Think about it. How do you not miss a note? Well, the only way you can explain how to not miss a note or how to not sound bad or how to not do any of those things is to play really well is to be really familiar with where that note is, is to be familiar with what sound you want and how to get it. But you can't not do something, right? Uh, I often will use the example of, okay, you know, you sit down, right? Here I am, I'm seated. And I'll say, okay, now, don't sit down anymore. Just don't sit down. And so a student will stand up. And I say, oh, I didn't tell you to stand up though, did I? So, so uh, I didn't say stand up, so you're not allowed to do that. So then they go, okay, uh, what? Like they, you know, so they'll try to slide off the chair, or, you know, and it's just impossible because your brain doesn't know how to not do stuff. It does, however, know how to do something that makes something else entirely impossible, like stand up, right? If I'm seated and I say, don't sit down, well, I'm not sitting anymore. Now I'm standing. I've changed the status of the thing because I've done something new. And so you can always do the new thing that you want, the way that you want to go, the way that you, and that, that starts at the beginning of this process, right? Be organized, know what you want and how to build it, uh, how, how you, what are, the, what are the components that are important, right? That's what I'm going to do that makes whatever old bad habits I had not possible to do anymore. And a lot of times I can, I, I can, uh, 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 I can oppose them directly. So if my habit is, for instance, that I use my lips too much to get around the horn, Okay, great. I'm okay. I'm not allowed to use my lips anymore. Uh, they have to stay relaxed. That's it, right? They're not allowed to move. They have to stay in place. See what I'm I, so I have to give them a direction, but then I can do that direction and I can fail at it and know that I didn't do what I wanted to do, but then I can try again. See what I mean? So only do things, don't not do things. Uh, and you build the good habits over the bad one in, uh, in that way. All right. And then uh, the last one on my list is repeat for a long time and be patient. Uh, so I said, uh, you know, as little as two weeks sometimes for, for really uh, like adjacent habits to things you're already doing. But sometimes up to a full year it takes at, of daily practice, right? You got to address it every single day for it to stick. I'm sorry. It's not my own. I mean, you, you might be able to best... Uh, other people on that, you know, but that's the, that's not me saying it. It's like psychology, right? And uh, I, that's why, that's why Olympic athletes are so, they spend so much time training because they have to have, they have to have those habits and uh, they have to do it in a time frame where their body can still actually do the thing, right? That's why so many of them are so young because it's just not possible to do some of those things uh, as your body gets older. And so they have to spend all the time in training because they have to build the habits and it takes thousands and thousands of hours to do it, um, to build all the habits together, right? They, they, we like to talk about the 10,000 hour rule uh, that's kind of from, well, different sources, but uh, most people read Blink uh, by Malcolm Gladwell and that's where they heard about it the first time. I believe it was Blink. And uh, that's true. It does take 10,000 hours to quote unquote master something, but in the trumpet world, it takes 10,000 hours to master knowing anything about the trumpet. And then it takes another 10,000 hours to master kind of manipulating those things. And I would argue it takes another 10,000 hours to actually get to the level of real professional musician because you're, you're stacking habits upon habits. And even if you start off in a totally wrong place, after 10,000 hours, you'll get to a place where you can kind of, you know, figure out what's, what, where, what, what's up and down, right? And then it takes another 10,000 hours to like actually master the basics of those things. And then it takes another 10,000 hours to utilize those basics for, um, for the really radical sort of results that some of the professionals that we idolize, uh, can get. So 
it takes you know thirty thousand hours. Uh, it sounds like a lot, but like thirty thousand hours to be Alan Vizzuti? Hey, sounds like a good investment to me. And uh, and and only twenty thousand hours to be like a viable like gigging musician in your in your local area. Um, and only ten thousand hours to play like really well in your community band or to start a music degree, right? So that's not too many. And most people only have three or four thousand hours under their belt when they start university. And um, well, and that's my job is to show them how to get that last six thousand hours in before they go to grad school, and hopefully then learn how to become a real professional. Um, but it's not about a number. It's about uh, it's about forming new habits really well the first time, and uh, and making sure you do it every day. And in that way, how many habits could there even be, right? Uh, but you do have to do it every day. If you skip days, it's going to take longer. So anyway, uh, so yeah, so be, be patient. Um, do simple things for a long time. That's the way to do it. Don't do complicated things. Uh, they're easy to mess up or just get part of. Do very simple things for a long time, a lot of times. And, uh, and remember that patience is something that is stronger by having it, right? So in other words, when I have patience, I exercise that patience, even if it's only a little bit, and I get a little bit better at having patience. There's a few things like this in the world. Uh, I just talked about another one the other day. I can't remember it off the top of my head right now, but, but patience is one of those things that like, you just have to have it. Oh, concentration also, right? If you, if you lose concentration, well, you get better at having concentration by using it and practicing it, right? Um, basically, you get better at it by having it. <laughs> and, so, and patience is this way too. You get better at having patience by having patience and just practicing feeling comfortable being patient. And uh, that can be hard for some people, but that's why being organized is at the top of the list too, because that helps you have patience. It helps you see patterns. It helps you use those patterns to stack habits. Um, and, and making additional time gives you a little bit of breathing room so that you know that you actually can build the habit that you want um, and then for me, pretending makes it all go away, right? I, if I'm if I'm not if I want to be somebody who has this habit already, but I'm not yet, well, I'll just pretend to be somebody who has this habit already, and then it takes the pressure off me. And uh, if I'm somebody who doesn't have patience, I can pretend to have patience too. And guess what? If I do the thing, it, what's the difference? So, all right, we've talked enough. Uh, now I do have to go in the other room and uh, get. I'm going to play some C trumpet, first of all. And I think I'm going to play my French Besson in C, uh, even though it's not the best for this, but I, it does help me play trumpet better when I play the French Besson. So that's what I'm going to do. Hmm. I'm missing the B side of the French Besson, but that's okay. This is the C pipe. So, so we're going to play the French Besson. I'm going to put it down here. Uh, I'm also going to go get my straight seven because that also helps me figure out how to play better. And we're going to play some of this Britain opera. I guess I can talk to you while I walk because that's how I have it set up. So uh, at, at, at school where I work, they are doing a light opera by Britain that is called The Prodigal Son. Uh, now, believe me when I tell you, uh, I have never seen this piece in my life before. And uh, it is, it's pretty different. It has, it has markings in it that I've never seen before. Uh, let's see if I can find one, actually. Oh, and I've apparently written some stuff out. Oh, right. I had to write out. So this is a good example of one of the things I do when I practice. You can see there I've written out some of the licks. Because I wanted to do some, uh, this, is what, this is why you pay attention in theory class. And also, this is what I was saying. It's probably going to block. Oh, no, it's fine. Thank goodness. Um, but this is why you pay attention in theory class, because I need, to, I need to figure out. So OK, this is page 32. Let's just go to it rather than me talking through it. All right? Yeah. So here's the lick. I'll play it for you. Not, not, not the lick. You know what I mean. Not that.
Weird, right? It's got F natural and F sharp. No, no, it doesn't. Sorry. F natural, D sharp, C sharp, B natural, A natural, G natural, and E. So it seems like it would be in the key of E, right? But it's got F naturals in it. But it's not F, it's not E Phrygian either, um, right? Which would be. So it's like Phrygia major, you know, like it doesn't make any sense. So I had to write that out on the, on the page because I had to sit down and like try to figure it out. And what I worked out is that it's like whole tone actually uh, plus E natural. So let me show you that. Which makes sense because part of uh, a major scale or a, mi a melodic minor scale, right, the top half of it is a whole tone scale anyway. It's where the half steps are that make it major or minor most of the time anyway. But I have to get this sound in my ear. And then there are more. And this whole section really sucks because uh, it's, this is like a very light opera. It's, um, it's got percussion, viola, um, organ, horn bass, I think flute, that might be it, there might be one other woodwind. Uh, I, we haven't played it yet, so, I, I, so I'm just going by my memory of listening. But, um, so you can't play, you can't be blasting away. I might actually play it on this if I can play it in tune, because this would be a better instrument for it, but I've tried this lick on a, a, a couple of things. The next one is, uh, starts on high B, and it's basically, um, well, I wrote minor descending octatonic. So what does that mean? Uh, if, if you know, if you're familiar with Holst's "The Perfect Fool," which is a, also a pretty offbeat um, uh, thing, but the the CSO brass did it a bunch of years ago uh, because Jay Friedman, their trump, their principal trombonist, did the arrangement. As a matter of fact, I premiered the arrangement at the Paul because he conducted. He wanted a, a workshop, and so we did the Perfect Fool arrangement that he did first. And then they did it as the Brass Buddies concert that year. So that's kind of exciting. But uh, so it's so this is what I mean by minor descending octatonic. So in other words, it's it's that would be octatonic, but it's not. It's minor, like like a natural minor descending, right? And and then those two things are a tritone apart. So that's one way to look at it. Uh, I don't know why, it, octatonic doesn't really fit here, but it's like two, the top of two minor scales that are a half step, that have a half step between the, the two parts, right? So um, you can think about it just, it's like a Z, it's a Z cell relationship, if you know what that is. But uh, two, two cells of notes that are the same that start a tritone apart is the best way I can tell you. So, okay, so let's play some of the actual licks. Because uh, that's my homework, and at this point I don't need a timer exactly, because uh, I'm not going to play just all the time. So let me get this. Well. Oh, that, that was fast. Oh, and I, I forgot this. Okay, so I'm, I'll turn this off, and I'm going to play a bunch of licks now. And I'm just going to play through them, but then I'll also practice them when they don't go well.
So now we got an A, a sharp and an A natural in there. And it's just, it's, it's so frustrating uh, to like try to figure it out. And that's also, I have that written down here to practice as well. So if I don't want to practice this whole piece, I can just pull out my cheat sheet that has the licks on it. And it's like a scale. I know it's always going to be in thirds like this, but it's a, it's a scale that I can practice every day so that I don't have to think about it in, in the, I always say in media res, which isn't really the right term, but in the piece, right? I don't have to try to figure it out again. I just go, okay, it's a scale I know. It sounds like this. I've practiced it recently. Here we go. It starts, now this one starts on A. Now this one starts on B, right? And if it's, oh, this is the different one with the A sharp in it. Okay, got it. I've practiced that too. Just like if it's, uh, let's say it's E Phrygian and then it's uh, E major. Okay, yeah, this is another scale that starts on this note that I've practiced. See what I mean? So that's what we want to get it to. And it, it ultimately needs to become a sound that I play, not a whole bunch of notes I read. Because as we've discussed many times on this channel, if you're reading notes, you're behind. You're too slow. Uh, it's also a new soapbox that I just got on that I would love to share with you, which is that um, uh, one of the things I talk about, I think I talked about last week, actually, or I didn't do one last week, but two weeks ago, uh, that you know a lot of people will rehearse their concerts. They'll, they'll call it a sound check, but they rehearse the concert right before the concert. And they'll sometimes run through everything. I used to play in a group that did this, and uh, some of the programs were really hard, and we would rehearse for two hours and then take an hour and a half off, so not even a full break, and then go play the concert. And that particular conductor just said, well, the group always plays better when we do this. So, and, and she wouldn't give up that rehearsal, uh, no matter how much the professional musicians in that group complained. Um, it just, she said, nope, I know, I know what I want. I need this. The, the, you know, the, the members of the group play better when I do this. And uh, of course, she wasn't talking about the brass because, of course, we miss more notes if you wear us out really bad, right? But what I realized is that uh, that was true, though, in that group. That if we didn't do, we, there was one time, I think, when we didn't get to do it, and we just did, really didn't sound great together. And it was because some of the members of the group, um, the non-professional members, let's say, uh, they, they didn't know the pieces. They just, they could, they would basically memorize the pieces, like, long enough to play the concert. And then they're, you know, they're, but they didn't really, the way that they played their instruments was note by note. So they basically had to practice right before the, the moment that was critical for them to play it right. Instead of learning to play by ear, play whole sections and know how the whole thing goes together, right? Then you know the piece. So my argument at the time and still is that if, if that is true about your group, then you're not really rehearsing them um, during your rehearsal times in a way that's going to help them actually know the, the piece. Now, I, I'm not, this is not an accusation against anybody who, who has this, uh, this setup uh, or, or feels like this is true about their group. Um, but, it's, but then it, it begs the question like, okay, yeah, how do I make it so that I can, they can just show up and play the gig and nobody needs to rehearse them right before? Uh, how, would I, how would I engineer that? And what would you, what would I, how would I benefit from it? Well, your brass players won't be dead when you play the concert. So that's a, that's a big bonus. Um, but also, people will know the music better because uh, if, you, if, you, if you made me play Frosty the Snowman at any given point from a dead sleep on any note, I could probably do it. So how do I get people to know the music that well? Well, I have to really direct their ears and their attention to the right things, but uh, I also have to influence their practice habits, and I also have to, you know, make sure that they they really do know the music. Like, what if I make them memorize parts of it? What if I, you know, make them memorize the whole thing? So um, there are ways to do it. And again, um, maybe not at every age group, maybe not at every level, but um, anyway, you want to play big sounds instead of note by note. And it's because the students in general uh, or the, or the non-professional musicians play notes instead of lines that they tend to need rehearsal right before because it's really hard to remember all the notes. So they have to be, they have to have a refresher right before. It's basically like cramming with a cheat sheet right before you go in and take the test. And I did that a bunch in college, so I totally get it, but I don't retain any of that information. So it, I don't really build anything that way. Instead, I want to, I want to have really whole knowledge of the piece of music. And that means listening, that means uh, playing my part maybe along with a recording, which of, of which th this has a couple, uh, but only on YouTube that I can find. I can't find a, I can find, I can find some recordings to buy, but I can't find any on Spotify, which is pretty strange. 
Um, so anyway, uh, let's practice some more. All right, here we go. So now you can see why this part is scary and hard to me because I have to, I have to be able to pick off. I guess pick off isn't the right word, but I have to be able to play a high D sharp on C trumpet, um, after quite a lot of little lip slurry scales, right? So let's see if we can engineer all that together. Um, it's actually easier to do because you're working your way up. I get to play B and then C sharp and then D sharp, right? And but then at the at the D sharp the rhythm changes, so I also have to be the most facile there, the most agile. Uh, so. So I got to practice that. Yeah, so. It's a really, really nasty lick. Um, let's just practice those two slowly. this talk about needing rest, right? I don't want to be picking off high D sharps all day and busting my face. But actually this, this seven mouthpiece and this French Besson kind of sound good on this kind of stuff. So maybe I do use this horn, at least for this section. Uh, if, I, if I could get it to play in D flat, uh, you, you bet I would be learning this lick on D, on D flat trumpet. But I did try to play it on uh, B flat trumpet doesn't work any better. Um, and it, I mean, it, you can hear that in the nature of the whole tone plus E natural, right? It's not going to be better in one key or another because it's not really built in a key. Uh, the same thing with the minor descending uh, octatonic thing. Um, that's not, it's, it's either in a bunch of sharps or a bunch of flats if you play it a half step different. And if you play it a whole step different, it's going to be basically the same. Uh, you're you're going to you're never going to find a solution because it's it's a symmetrical lick. So every trumpet now that doesn't mean that it's not idiomatic a little bit on one horn or another, right? If if you you know maybe maybe one of them just has you know has cross fingerings like this and one of them has cross fingerings like this. Well, okay, one of those is definitely better, right? So uh, I I might be able to find that, but I, so I've played this on D trumpet, on B flat trumpet, on E flat trumpet. None of them are better than the C trumpet. And, uh, and it's written in C trumpet, so this way at least I'm not guessing at the notes uh, <laughs> too much anyway. So, okay, well that's enough of that lick, I think. Um, I can go back and practice it. Let's see if there's any other spot that I feel like. I need to listen to this again, honestly. Oh, we also need to pick a mute. Um, it says fiber mute. So let's talk about, 
let's do some mute stuff, right? I've got a bunch of mutes, always. Uh, some of them are still at school, unfortunately. But let's pick a fiber mute. Because I have lots of mutes that might count as a fiber mute. So uh, now, I need, to, I need to get some cotton balls for this one. You, you put cotton balls in there, it makes it a lot softer. Um, this is technically not fiber, this is balsa wood, but I think it kind of counts. Um, now this is plastic, fi it's not fiber woven plastic, but it's plastic and a little bit of wood, so I think we could maybe try to use this one. Uh, this one is made out of cardboard, so, you know, not quite the same, but in the right sort of vein. This is the Chicago mute. No, not the Chicago. This is the, the Hickman mute, I think. And then this one, not with the donut. This one's just wood, but it makes a really nice sound. And so we have to figure out, uh, we're, we're playing with muted horn. And this is, this is a horn, this is Osman, I believe, made this one. Uh, uh, Dad, if you're still on, you can tell me who made this wooden mute with the little adjustable thing. I think it's Osman, right? Uh, not, uh, yeah. Well, whoever makes those horn mutes. Anyway, so we're going to try a couple of them. Now, the other part that's hard about this is that it's very long. And like I said, it's with horn. And it's unison, I believe, with horn an octave lower. So we just have to be the top sound of this. Now, uh, one reason not to play this trumpet is this mute's not going to fit in it. So we won't, we won't bother with that. If we're going to play this, I'll probably have to play this mute or something like it. But let's, so let's see if we like this sound. It's okay. Um, maybe not the best. It was easy enough to play, though. I'll, I'll give it that. Now, this one I'm not sure. This one doesn't like to stay in uh, because it's missing one part of a cork on one side, right? And then another part on this side. And then this one is a full cork. Uh, and it came to me that way. Um, so, see if we can use the long cork on the top. Actually, that doesn't make as much sense, but we'll see if this will stay in. If it does, I'll find a way to keep it in. It's a little loud, and this is supposed to be pianissimo. Um, and if you think about what a, a muted horn sounds like, it, it, this would match it, but only if the horn also played a little louder. Uh, let's try this cardboard mute. See if that one will stay in. Usually it uh, does because you can. It presses into the cardboard. spit in the mouthpiece, but uh, it works. I'm, let's go back to the, 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 the wooden mute. See if it's any different, really. So both candidates, I think this one sounds more like a horn being muted. There's that, that wooden, wooden sound that is from the wooden mute. Uh, so that, that might be a better match. It does say fiber mute though, so let's switch horns. Uh, we haven't tried two of the mutes yet, and that's because neither of them would fit in the bell of this. So let's switch briefly to a normal C trumpet, right? Oh, look, we've been here two hours already. Jeez Louise. I'm going to keep the same mouthpiece just to keep the variables sort of similar. I'll mute this just so I can play a little louder.
So it's louder. Like I said, I need to fill it with cotton balls and try it out. Um, finally, let's try this mute. So actually, this one is also a contender. It may fit in, in the bell. I didn't really try it, did I? Nah. Yeah, it's not the right. And for these mutes, you know, if you don't get the, uh, for these bells, rather, if you don't get the right mute, then the physics is all wrong, and it's not going to play in tune, and it's not going to play well. That's why you get a special bell, or sorry, special mute for your E-flat trumpet. Um, but this makes me very excited. I do have a metal mute. Now, this is probably not going to be good for this piece, but it's always too far in my normal trumpets, and that's because, look, it's got the, in, uh, the in, inbuilt corks. They go into the metal and through the, through the whole thing. Um, I've never tried it on a trumpet this age before. Oh, it doesn't like it still. I don't want to press too hard. I don't want to warp the bell. That looks okay, maybe. I'll keep it over the... So totally inappropriate for this, but man, would I ever would I for sure use this on FET, right? Oh, sorry, it's uh, what uh, where's the guitar? On? <laughs> See, I told you it's gonna fall out, but it fell on my spit rag, so. So anyway, maybe maybe some other bell. This is too small still, but my other bells are all too big. Uh, one day I'll get to use this cool. This came in a, uh, uh, I think this came with a Con 22B or 2B or something that I bought that's like in parts over there because it wasn't, wasn't soldered together, even though they didn't mention that in the eBay listing. But it was only $210, so, you know, came with a case. It was nice. All right, so we'll put this one back. This is not going to work. But... This is the hit to me. There's a blue one too called the Chicago, but I don't have that one. I thought I did, but maybe I just maybe it's maybe I lost it. Anyway, this one is the carpet mute, I like to call it. Because it's carpeted. So you can see. It's also too it's 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 too big for this bell, so I may have to play this section on my regular C trumpet or something else, right? Um, but we have some good tuners. The, this one works really well, the red one and the wooden one. And um, I could also file down the corks on this one. Uh, I probably need to, but it's never going to make. See how far out of the bell it is. It's never going to make it into this bell unless I. I mean, I'd have to scrape them down to nothing, and then then it's going to mess up the physics of, of, the, of the throat because this will be so far up it and it's so big. So I, I, but I'll fill this with, um, with cotton balls and try it on the regular C trumpet, and that might be the way to go. So uh, I'm going a little long here, so I'm just going to look and see if there's anything close by. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff in this. Uh, the flute player has to play, I think, piccolo, key, and alto flute. And then there's a lot of weird, there's this, there's this seagull notation, that means like to pause and sort of like place together with the singers these little events, and so you kind of, you're supposed to give those and wait and watch and then give and then wait and watch and give when doing this without a conductor, which is, again, it's like uh, very scary to me. Um, and then there's this other thing that's like, it looks like uh, a crescendo, but it's a bunch of sticks instead of a, like it, it has the shape of a crescendo, but like it's filled in with up and down like vertical lines. And apparently that means to get faster or slower based on like, so it's a rhythmic or uh, crescendo or decrescendo. Um, at least that's what I'm told. 
So uh, I couldn't find any evidence of any of that anywhere in any literature. So I'm just going to take take the uh, base player's word for it. And I can, I'm sure. I mean, he, it's, this is his project. Uh, we also get to um, sing in this one. So I'm going to have to practice my uh, French, it looks like. No, it's not French, is it? Uh, oh, unfortunately, it might be Latin. I don't know how to say Latin, but some of it's in English, just not all, not the ending. Um, anyway, there's a lot of long notes in this one. Uh, I, I encourage you to go listen to it. Uh, like I said, I'll tell you the name of it again. Uh, it is, oops, took all the pages with me. The Prodigal Son by Benjamin Britten. This is uh, a liturgical uh, light opera that he put together. There's, I think, three or four of them. And, uh, and most of the reviews say that this is the worst one, but I actually find it really fascinating. It's, uh, litur it's, it's liturgy that we don't really hear set to music a lot. And um, so that's interesting. And it's Britain, so Britain's almost always good music. And uh, that's really what I care about. So anyway, uh, all right, so we talked about uh, habit building. We went through all of that. We did some bass trumpet mouthpiece. Uh, we worked through this Britain a little bit. I actually really need to work on my fifth bridge ensemble stuff. Um, but this is getting played on Monday as a read through. And so then I'll spend all of my spring break looking at um, looking at the fifth bridge stuff. And I'll probably stream a lot of that. So look for some new uh, extra streams this coming week because I am just at home uh, trying to get everything done that I need to get done that I've been putting off because I'm just working myself to death right now. Um, so I'm going to practice a lot because I finally have time. And um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So if you have questions or uh, if you have a topic that you want me to do, send me an email. I'd be happy to talk about anything. I might do one every day if I, ha if I you know, I probably need to get some other stuff done too, but, um, but this is more fun anyway, right? So, um, all right. Well, thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I will see you in the next one.